Oh, yep, we're recording. <laughs> right, we're back in the room. <laughs> right, this video is probably going to go out. I'm going to put this one out literally probably tonight as it's Sunday. Uh, Sunday the 30th of April. I have made previous videos. I need to upload them. I'm a little bit behind on my uploads. Um, what's going to happen is, well, basically tonight, yes, tonight, I'm going to literally use this living room. I'm going to set out test track. I'm going to do some videos. Yeah, some running videos, some reviews, long overdue. I'm going to try and get back to normal. Um, I'm going to record these basically on my cameras, new camera, with other lighting, um, a separate uh, lapel mic as well. So you've probably seen me with a lapel mic attached to me. So basically, I can do some. Uh, so I get the, all the audio I need to do. There's a few other. I've got basic. Uh, it's basically a, a, a microphone pack, so I attach it to the back and it record on my uh, sound. Um, hopefully I'll be having a Rode microphone, so basically you'll probably see me with a Rode mic attached to me. Um, and then basically if I invite other people and I'm doing interviews or I um, have a other fellow modelers involved I can do I could sort out the sound that way so there's other equipment on the way um, basically I've got to put together an intro and start editing again yes <laughs> hopefully I won't get so frustrated with it as before where I do all the editing and the computer crashes and I lose all my work so frustrating but yes on the track on track to go back to normal so I'm making normal videos again at the moment I'm just recording this raw this one just to let you know what's going on because I'm going to make all these videos and I'm going to edit it all put it all together have a nice intro hopefully this is what I'll be working on and then I can publish back to normal. So once everything's made, all the templates, everything's made, put it in the editing suite, bing bang bosh and bosh it out. <laughs> um, people out there that do it, if they got any feedback, please, I'm welcome for feedback. Uh, but I am learning, bearing in mind. So there are things that I do get wrong. I can remember on some of my previous videos when I used to make them. Oh, it's so annoying and I put it all together and I run it. I need to double check it and check it for mistakes because in some descriptions on Locos I was reviewing, instead of putting it as a 462, I put it as 460 because I didn't, oh, I left that in the template and I should have, taken that out of the template so when it comes to uploading I can put it in as a 462 it's annoying and I've already published that video so frustrating um, yes channel name this is a big one now I'm known as Tornado Steam 81 and Tornado Models 81 my main, I want to change the name to Evergreach Junction 81. So that is going to be my my name, my brand and everything else. That's what I want to bring into, bring in, into my uh, videos. So basically everything know, be known and hopefully you want to know me as Evergreach Junction 81. As I am a Somerset and Dorset fanatic. I like S&D 
and I'm having a uh, totem made with that name which will be going into the new layout in the new uh, outhouse. On the uh, garden and everything else, um, as you know we're end of April, uh, beginning of May, um, phase one and two are complete. Phase three, I am currently getting the uh, components in to do that job, but I'm, the moment I want to do some videos and have fun with my hobby, I want a little break from working outside. And then obviously weather's gonna start warming up, hopefully, well it already has, in a way, it's starting to warm up. <laughs> um, I can crack on with that. So obviously I'll go quiet, there's going to be periods where I won't be uploading because I am really busy. Um, I did, I don't, I didn't publish it but I've repaired the hole in the wall where I did some chasing. Where basically I fitted a light outside and I changed for a double socket and the plaster had blown, I filled all that area, I've taken out some plaster. I still haven't finished this, that was just a patch up job, I'm going to literally strip this room and basically knock out all the damaged plaster and then prep it and then skim the whole lot. So that's going to be a big job and obviously I did mention about the flooring, I've got to take up the flooring and repair some some floor yeah the it moves so literally the whole flooring is going to get redone so the whole this whole room is going to get redone so for a period of time i won't be able to do any of these videos um because this room is going to be gutted completely literally <laughs> then obviously i'm going to get it all nicely done, like all the plastering sorted out, coving, all the um, skirting, everything, and everything's getting sorted out, redone, and obviously I'm going to have all the equipment that's in front of me and behind you, all nice and neat, put into a, a shelf in, in the fireplace. So that everything, it's a lot of things going to be changing in this room. Uh, that's what's going to happen in here. Obviously, you know about outside phase three, and then moving on to phase four. Once phase three is done, I'm going to start building the base for the outhouse. <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh, that's the, basically the, uh, the cable as well for the uh, all the electrics. That's got to be put in, fitted, and then I'm going to connect it up. Basically, I'm going to get my uncle in, and he's going to sort it all out. But I'll put all the cable in, fit all the cable, get all it ready, and then it'll be ready for that to be sorted out. Yes. And then it'll be the build. Wow. Can't wait for that. Really can't. Um, I did mention in previous videos that there were some models that I had put by my local model shop is Kerno Model Rail Centre. I use them quite a lot. They are my local model shop. I use them quite a bit. There are other, other model shops I use but my local model shop is Kerno Model Rails and I had locos and some rolling stock put by. And I said, I've been saying for a while that I needed to pick them up. Um, obviously, I've been working really busy and I've been busy here doing work outside, fencing, patio, the, the small shed, the fen other fence that I've got to do, work inside the house. So I haven't been able to go up and collect those models. I have just recently gone there and picked up some of the models. I still have other models on pre-order. I have a, let me see, I have an Acura scale, a few models from Acura scale I've got on pre-order. I'm still after the 
the, I couldn't get a hold of the 37 I wanted. I'm going, I've already pre-ordered from the second batch. So the a class 37 that's going to be in the second batch, I've pre-ordered that. I didn't get a hold of the, it's the BR Green 37 I was after. I didn't get my hands on one. But the uh, second batch that Curious Gal are doing, I've pre-ordered that. So that's that done. Um, another model from a Curious Gal, it's class 31, all bells and whistles, that one. I've pre-ordered that, I pre-ordered that ages ago. Still waiting for that, but when that comes in, obviously I'll be getting that. <laughs> I can't wait, can't wait for that. Um, another Curious Gal product, um, a manor, yes. And I'm a subscriber to Hornby magazine. So you know which one I'm after. I've pre-ordered that. And obviously when Hornby magazine let me know that it's in, and it'll be on its way to me. So we've got that model to look forward to when they arrive. It shouldn't be too long for the, the uh, Curious Gal manor. Talking about manners, that's the other model I basically had saved at the model shop. Return to the side of me. Yes. Dapol's Manor. Yes. Oh. This, this is absolutely gorgeous loco. I had to get the Dapol one and I can't wait for the Acura scale one. There's obviously this really good stuff about the uh, Dapol one. On the Dapol, um, they make fantastic product, and I do have a lot of Dapol products, as you will see uh, shortly. And probably you have seen me hold up Dapol product in front of the camera before, um, but there are still a few models I'm after, and obviously some of which are in. O-Gage. Ooh, O-Gage. I need to share those with you. Obviously I've got one loco, but I've got a few others that I'll be collecting. And I will share that with you. Um, also, there's another thing as well. On the layout build, I have... I have a lot of um, older models that I like to run. So that's code 100. I do like the uh, new Pico ball, ball headed track, which is in uh, code 75. Bear with me a sec. Here we go. Here's a section of it here. All the sleeper spacing is quite uh, prototypical for double O, which is quite attractive. And I do like the way ball head track looks. Um, I really, I don't know what I'm gonna do. It's such, the Code 75 is such a final rail, and obviously it's within, in the ball headed track. I am toying with the idea of building my layout build in code 75 ball head track. This is just one section, obviously. I'm just, I'm just going to use this for like display. I might do a, a display bit with this with this track. Um, I'm still toying with the idea. I don't know yet, I might do it, I might build it in this, but it means I can't really run a lot of my older locos because of the flanges, obviously Code 100 sorts that out. I just like the spacing and I like the look of the track. And it has been out for a little while now and this is my first example of it. I don't know. I'm still in two minds. I don't know. I haven't completely made my mind up yet. But I do like the way this looks. And obviously I'll have to get turnouts and double slips and everything else to build the layout I want to build. 
I might do it in bits. I don't know. I'm still haven't fully made my mind up yet. A lot of some of my older stuff I will probably be selling on, but obviously some of it I can't sell on. I need to keep because obviously it means a lot to me. Um, I don't know yet. I haven't made my mind up, but yes, I do. I am impressed with this track. Pico make really good track and obviously once it's painted and weathered and ballasted you make it all blend in and I've seen many Laos use this and it's really impressive I just had to get myself a piece of about a hundred and I can't remember it was a hundred and twenty odd quid for a box roughly that price so obviously I'd have to buy a box each time and then build it up and then do a, do a build and obviously with all the turnouts we'll see I haven't 100% decided I'm still I'm in an iron about that so yeah well yeah I think it would look good with this well, obviously there's a lot of changes going on obviously like I said changing my name Evergreen Junction 81 <sighs> we'll see we'll see I, I, still, <laughs> I still haven't made my mind up I do like the look of it and obviously it fits we have steam here or anything though I don't know but yes this so a Dapo Manor, I don't know if I made that out. Here we go. Draycott Manor, there you go. <laughs> oh, I just had to get a, I really did. Absolutely amazing model. Amazing box too, a solid box. They're all nice and protected with the foam, owner's manual, you know, that's a nice little thing you get with uh, Dapo. Let's have a look at her. Obviously I'm going to do a video on her shortly, so you'll see that. Slip her out, surrounded by foam. There you go. And in the ice cube packaging, And we do have some uh, separate etched um, number plates to fit as well. And, uh, the camera's making that out. I really not. Can you make that out? Sort of. <laughs> Put that in there. And obviously, there's the uh, the tool to extract the. Um, PCB board that holds the uh, decoder blanking plate and a uh, I think there's some details vacuum bright a vacuum pipe and speaker housing in there yeah um, I may upgrade this to uh, sound as a Zimo decoder I do believe so I might do that. I may do that. And obviously, I can uh, have an additional speaker fitted in the tender as well. So, you've got sound in the tender, sound in the loco, which is rather nice. Oh, look at that, it's gorgeous. Let's take the uh, protective plastic off. I have to place it. I don't, I don't want to damage it. I'll place it on the floor and then I can pick up the loco. Oh, yes. Look at that. Absolutely gorgeous. 
I did say I am, I've got a soft spot for some Western locos. Obviously, my family being in the West Country, uh, dominance would be by the Great Western. But obviously, you know, the Somerset and Dorset use mainly, uh, they obviously did have some Western locos when, the, when it fell into the Western region, but predominantly were Midland locos, LMS, and Southern. So you get all the bullies and that. So that is it's unique, you see. That's why I do like the uh, Somerset and Dorset. But I do have a soft spot for Western locos. And it's just me. And I do like this manor. You know, it's nice that uh, manufacturers produced it. Sprung buffers. You wouldn't expect anything less. And obviously this um, smoke box door gets removed and that's where all the uh, DCC, uh, it's the next 18 I do believe. And obviously I could fit a speaker under there, a sugar cube speaker underneath, a small one. And like I said, another further speaker in the tender. So yes, that might be something, I believe the running plate, yeah, the running plate, metal. Oh, that's good, that's good, nice touch. I do like the design where it connects the tender to the loco. And look at the detail in that cab as well. That is so nice. Oh, I can't wait to run her. That's going to happen pretty soon actually. I don't know when you'll see those videos but I'll be making them. It is a nice, nice loco. So yes, this has been in the shop for a while. I just hadn't picked it up. Obviously with me being busy here and getting ill as well, a couple of times I, I was ill. So didn't fancy going into a shop, you know, spreading whatever it is, you know, I obviously had COVID at one point, so. But they kept it by for me, and obviously I came in and collected it. So I just got some rolling stock, and obviously got to wait for some models to be, uh, make, wait for some models to be, to, to deliver to, to the shop for me to collect. Which I am looking forward to. I actually can't keep my eyes off this model, it's amazing. I'm really impressed. I'm glad I got her. I can't wait for the Cura Scale one as well. So I have two manners. Anyway, one Dapo, one Cura Scale. And I think each, each you know, I haven't seen the uh, Cura Scale one, so I can't really comment on it. But from what people have said about this one, the Dapo one, absolutely amazing. I'm glad I got her. Look at that. So there's the Loco. Yeah, absolutely amazing. You have to put her back down in a packaging. Your tender, let's have a look. There's a small uh, early crest on there. It's a smaller, smaller version. And something else is different as well, a small, smaller version of the uh, early crest. A nice tender this. Sprung buffers again. Coal loads. The coal load looks quite, quite nice actually. It is removable, you can hear it. So I could put crush up coal in there if I wanted to. I just like the way that the, this mounts, you know, instead of the fiddly wires that you, you get with some other manufacturers and I, I do know as well I have discussed with Hornby is obviously we know about the white plug they are looking at um, going for a different arrangement so hopefully you some people like it I don't know it's, it's, 
it was very fiddly when we first came out. And I said about, we all struggled to remove it. If you remember one of my videos a long time ago, um, but Hornby produced this tool to remove it, which I have a couple of, I have a couple of them. So to remove the white plug. Um, now, obviously, technology's advanced and moved on. Things are getting better. There's a better ways of doing things. And now, I think you, I don't know, they are fiddly. And I know some people have snapped the wires. They're very thin wires and snapped it out of the plug. And it is very fr frustrating. I have actually done a few jobs in basically buying a new plug, a, a new, it's a, the actual plug itself, and then replacing it, rewiring it, and putting a new one in. I have actually done that a couple of times with people before, because obviously they've uh, snapped the cable, and it's so frustrating. But yeah, I'm really impressed. I can't wait to run it. Looks right. Oh, there's the under frame. Under frame detail, all the brake rigging's all fixed and there's a water scoop underneath there as well. Yep, it does collect, yeah, it has got pickups on the, on the tender. Not as free, free running though. There's, there's a little bit of resistance in there. we would have to see how that goes. But yes, Nice model. I can't wait to run that. Oh, but that's not all I've got. Because obviously there's a couple that I had to pick up. So let's put the manor aside. It's always nice when you get a new loco. Obviously I knew about this because I've had this put aside for me for a while. Now I've been waiting to pick her up for ages. Actually, just put her in. I don't want. I don't want to leave her out. Put her back in a uh, ice cube packaging. I don't want to damage. You see, you know these models are getting on really expensive. You know, some of them are three hundred pound mark. I'm talking about that. There's a rather, rather special loco that I'm after as well. And I think I might be picking her up. Uh, I don't know when, but all I can say, is she's made of die cast and she's heavy and there's not many, many of them made. Yeah. Yes, rather expensive. So it's an informed purchase. And then it's a commemorative uh, model. I'm so tempted. She may end up in my collection. That's all I can say. I haven't made my decision on that yet. But keep keep your eyes out. Obviously, uh, once I get her, I will show her. I'll do a video. More of a collector's model, I'd say. But oh, she, she's gorgeous, you see. And I, it's, it's Hornby. Yeah, uh, a double O branded model. So I don't know if you can work out what that is. If you can, great. And uh, when I, if I do get her, I'll be uh, showing her. There's a few models in the Hornby double O, but again, it's really, uh, I shouldn't really get them to be honest. But there are certain models that I want. Then there are, uh, again, it is difficult because certain models that are limited edition, what happens is, there's, I can't, I can't hide this. They are, I'm gonna call them idiots. I'm sorry, that's how I feel. That's how I feel, they are idiots that don't want them. They just buy them and they buy loads of them and then when they're all gone they sell them on auction sites for stupid money 
and I'm sorry, it's not fair to the modeler. I don't agree with that. That's just greed, you know. And that's what makes certain, you know, certain limited editions hard to get hold of. And there are a few models in, you know, limited editions that I'm after. I could have got some. There's some that are made a couple of years ago that I am still seeking to get my hands on. But one way or another, you can't always commit either, you know, you've got, you've got to move or you've got repairs on the car, other funds get moved elsewhere. You can't commit to, I can't always commit to these super duper models, you know? Unless at the time you come across some retailers, which I have mentioned in the past, they do a really good deal. And sometimes I can't walk away from that and I have actually got a really good deal from some retailers. And then this one, yes, yeah, this is another one. This one is obviously because oh, I've still got the elastic band where they kept my details on. Um, I was so impressed with Hornby's 9F. And I did say, oh, I, got, I like the black one. It's really, I, did, I saw it on the Hornby magazine layout. And I just saw it and it was just shining and I just felt attracted to it. No, I, I was so impressed with the uh, Hornby's 9F, I had to get the black one. And there was a few other, obviously I, there's one that I particularly wanted that they released. And obviously I'm waiting for future ones. There are some that they've announced in the 2023 range that have single chimneys. Now, as you know, I'm a Somerset and Dorset fanatic. If you ever saw a 9F on the Somerset and Dorset with a single chimney, it had been borrowed. It doesn't belong on the S&D. Most locos, 9Fs, that ran over the Somerset and Dorset metals all had double chimneys. Right. And then obviously certain tenders as well. But we can model this. I could renumber and re, re, remodel it to depict an S and D loco. There are a few models that Hornby have all uh, released that are mo uh, models of particular locos that ran over the S and D. There is one that I I think I haven't got that one yet. I haven't collected it. It's another one I want to collect. I think it's a standard four and BR green. That Hornby have produced and it was uh, based at Temple Coon, which ran over S and D metals, and that's another model that they produced years, a couple of years ago actually, and I just didn't pick it up. In fact, I may get that. This I might I might pick that up. <laughs> Watch this space. It's, an, it's just entered my head. Um, I like Somerset and Dorset, so that's my preference. And obviously 9Fs ran over that line, you know. And yes, I do like Hornby's 9F. And it's, it's, there are, it's, it's a little number. You probably get what it is from the number there, what one. Because during the period of time there was the Evening Star, which you obviously know ran over S&D Metals and two black ones and one had a mechanical stoker it's basically not a stoker it, it pushed the coal forward me mechanically i think hornby modeled one but this is the other one you've got to be careful of the blur obviously i know that all new Hornby products are being put in this cardboard box and in, in a bigger box 
more solid box, and that's what's going to happen with all their new uh, releases. Obviously, the other half's in there. Put that aside. Take. Yeah, it's better. I. This is one of my complaints that I spoke to Simon about. I was really getting quite annoyed and frustrated with um, models that I had pre-ordered and been let down as well and had got and then taken out the box and they all fall, fall, fell to pieces. And I'm, obviously with this extra packaging, there's obviously maybe from some of the feedbacks I gave to Hornby, which I was getting really frustrated with them at the time. And obviously they've obviously listened to my criticism and, and I'm not there you know, it's valid criticism when you're spending stupid amounts of money I expect perfection I'm sorry that's I've said this a couple of times and they've put it in a more solid box and I'm, I'm happy you know, I'm happy with that if I'm spending a lot of money I want my I want my model perfectly you know it's in good condition and good running order. I shouldn't expect anything less. If you're asking, if manufacturers are asking for that sort of money, that's, I'm sorry, I'm really, I'm really strict on that. All right, let's have a look. There we go. I'm having a little bit of a rant. Sorry, I do apologize. Look at that. That's absolutely amazing. And I can see it in back to front on the camera. <laughs> oh, late BR class 9F. And I'm reading that back to front. <laughs> that, oh, I just had to get her. I was so impressed with the even style. Obviously, there's a lot of die cast in this model. What has it got on the back? I do like the drawing as well at the side. It's really nice. And obviously you've got that uh, technical drawing as well and some of the information there. Sorry about the reflection of the light. Hopefully you can make some of that out. What date's on there? You usually do date 2021. <laughs> oh. And obviously there's a brief history on the side. I haven't read that yet. G is 92194, this is loco number, but I may change that number. I may renumber her, you see. God, it's a little bit tight, and please bear with me. I do like these boxes. Obviously, Dapo have been doing them for a while and held you. And obviously other new manufacturers are Cure Scale and Cavalex. Hornby are a little bit behind on the packaging. Backman still do their models in yeah. I do have some models where their parts fall off, but not so many from Backman. And I've got a few Backman models to pick up as well. Obviously a uh, 47 and a 37 with the new Deluxe, which is rather expensive. Again, you know, obviously I'm going for the sound room, the spinning fans and, what is it? The spinning fans, sound, and the tinted windows. But you give you options again as well with that. Back when do you, know, you get normal DCC ready, you can get DCC uh, sound, DCC ready, DCC fitted, DCC sound, and the Deluxe model, which has got all all bells and whistles. So you spinning fans, the sound, the tinted glazing. But it gives you an option as a modeler. You know, if you wanted the high end, it is again an informed purchase. 
but you could still get the same model, but without the fan spinning. If it's you know you not fussed by that, you could still purchase that at a lower price. But still, it's still pricey. This whole hobby is pricey. You know, I don't. I'm not a record producer like Pete Waterman or you know or Mr. Holland or um, who else? There's quite a few famous uh, musicians and um, record producers that are in this hobby. I can't wait to see Making Tracks 3 as well. We'll be at Chester Cathedral in the summer and then be on display in the, in the massive formation with all the make I think making tracks one, two and three all put together in the Great Electric Train Show in October and I'm looking forward to that. I really can't wait. <laughs> I, I'm primary, I do like steam but obviously I do like modern era and uh, early diesels. My daughter's mainly into modern era, current basically. She's into current. She likes the uh, class 450s, 350s, all sorts of <laughs> class 66s, you know, yes. She, she, she likes, into, I think it's because of the colours you see. But she, she prefers that. Uh, obviously, I, I'm, I like steam. But I do, I like them all. That's my problem, you see. A little bit tight. There's another nice thing that I'm glad Hornby are doing. The uh, driving crew are. I don't know if you make that out. They're painted. Another nice touch. I, I thank you for that, Hornby, for doing that. Obviously, I, I can. Oh, painting's not my strong point, you see. I like doing the modelling. I like adding uh, etch parts so I can get the scalpel and take off uh, moulded pieces and then replace them with brass or etch parts. Um, I, I'll do, I have to do videos on this, so I'll show you. you know, obviously, I have uh, some videos. And cameras placed in different angles and we can I can edit it so you can see all different angles and obviously when I'm doing repair videos that's what I need to get into I might do some I might do some because at the moment I, I've I've and I'm, I'm able to do this because my uh, daughter is away at the, at the moment so it's enabled me to use the room without worrying about my daughter coming down because she she has uh, learning difficulties and we've discussed this before and it can be rather difficult obviously I don't want her in the camera camera not until she's older until she understands things a little bit better um, she does sit down and obviously I've had track circuits set out in here before and previous uh, homes that I've lived in and we've had running sessions and played and I've had her locos running and all sorts. So, but at the moment, it's enabled me to, to have a, you know, I can have all sorts of configurations without worrying about her knocking things over or getting too excited. Because that's what happens, she gets overexcited. She's trying to express herself, you know. But she's away with her grandparents. And I obviously got to be careful. I don't want my 200, 300 pound loco being knocked over. You know. Obviously once it's put in the outhouse, uh, she can just sit and back and watch. She doesn't have to watch where she's treading, you know. It'll be on a lao, a purpose built area which she, she would look forward to seeing as well. Obviously she's gone to shows with me and exhibitions and she's seen these louts. 
and obviously she's like some modern era, making tracks one and two that she's seen, especially one with all the tunnels and that, that got her really excited. Wow, this is one, oh, this is one gorgeous loco. Just look at it, it just looks so, I've got Backman's 9Fs as well, so, but I have to admit, this, this is something else. This is something else, trust me. I'm really, it's, oh, it's such a gorgeous machine. Can I get her out separately? Is she connected? I think she, yeah, she's permanently connected. Let me put her down and I'll collect her from the floor because obviously I don't want to drop her. Because it's connected to the tender as well. Oh, there we go. Oh, look at that. That is one absolutely gorgeous. Like, I like this. Oh, I'm well impressed with this. I can't, I'm looking forward to running out on the rails. And that's probably what's going to happen next. I've got to set up all the track in here. And then we'll have some trains running. I'll get to pull some Mark 1s. Wow. Obviously I've got an extensive... I've collected throughout the years, you see. An extensive collection of Backman Mark 1s. And Backman Mark 2s. And obviously now Hornby of... Um, got Mark... Obviously the... the um, Intercity 225, class 91, with the DVT and all the full rake of the Mark IV, so I can get that running for you as well. And the APT, and I've got some uh, additional coaching packs to pick up. That's what I've left at the shop at the moment. But I'm going to model them as well. I did say in a previous video that I'll, I'll model the, uh, remodel the Mark, the Mark, the uh, APTs. Uh, rolling stock because I'm going to paint it and do all sorts to it remove the capacitor you won't be able to see that anymore um, oh, this is gorgeous this is really well modelled I'm really I was so impressed with the evening star obviously I'll probably end up getting a few more 9Fs from Hornby if they produce produce other variants um yes but going back to the yeah so i'll be able to run them and obviously hornby have uh they're redoing the mark threes so there's new tooling and i want i've already got the mark threes for the hst but they've produced the newer tooling and obviously i've got them on pre-order as well always spending money not nothing not there's nothing anything wrong with the uh, current mark threes but I wanted to look to mod yeah you know, modernize them and get more detail and I might try and model the current yeah you know, the mark three the old mark threes um, I believe most of them are former Lima tooling because obviously the original Hornby Mark III's were a shortened version. I do have them as well, along with the old Ringfield HSTs. I've got HSTs in all different guises and different manufacturing time periods. Which I'll probably make videos on them as well because I'm going to make some videos on some sets. Obviously, I'm going to sell a lot of my collection as well. That's another point I want to make. Um, I will be selling a few of my older models to make room for the new. I can't keep... It's getting a little bit out of control, if I'm honest, the, the amount I've got at the moment. And obviously, I've just purchased this and the manor, and I've got some coming on the way, so... 
I've got to make room, so I have to make some informed decisions on models that I want to part ways with. Models that I have purchased in bits and I've repaired. So, and I've decided for some reason to keep them, and I shouldn't have really. They're all projects and I've borrowed parts of certain models as well. I've done that as well. So they become donors. But then obviously I can get those other parts, put them on and and sell them on. And obviously it's taken up space and obviously I want to expand on certain certain models I want and the, the, the Hornby 9F being one of them and obviously the Manners and I can't just settle for one era and one uh, section of the country as it were that's my problem as well Obviously, I've got a lot of modern stuff as well, which probably you guys haven't really seen. I haven't really done many videos on modern, current, modern day uh, traction. I've got a lot of electrics, yeah. Obviously, you know about the uh, Class 91, because I've shown you. Well, I haven't really shown you that either, to be honest. Yes, I need to do some more videos, so that's what I'm going to do. I'm happy with this, I'm glad I've got her, and I've got to make some videos, I've got to make these videos. Very delicately put her down, she is heavy by the way, die cast, there's a lot of weight in there, I, I do like that, because obviously it solves a lot of problem with traction, so I can run quite a, uh, considerable rake of Mark 1's behind her because she's got the adhesion, she'll stick to the track, that's what I want, you know. Right, another thing I've forgotten about, and this video is getting rather long. Yes, yes, this Hornby's uh, HMDCC TXS triple sound now as I know currently recording this this is only available with ISO which is Apple Apple products I do have Apple uh, devices in the house um, but obviously primarily I do have uh, Androids and I don't think it's available on Android at the, mo at the moment, so I'm going to have to use the iPad. I've got a new iPad. It's not mine, it's my daughter's, but she won't mind me using it. Um, Hornby are looking to bring this out on, um, on uh, Amazon devices as well, and other devices. Obviously, it's going to take time. This is a, a product in development, so... There are some frustrations you have to really bear with Hornby. This is like a phase one, you know, this is their first development, series one, whatever you want to call it. And obviously, as they improve things, you know, their products will improve. Um, obviously, this is being produced, it's a Bluetooth product, so no longer relying on signal sent through the track send the signal directly to the decoder. I'm going to mention one thing, and I've always mentioned this, I do not recommend mixing DC and DCC. Just don't do it. I don't know why Hornby put this on the front. Functions with HM, DCC app control, DCC and DC controllers. I don't recommend that. Purely just run DCC with DCC products. DCC decoders. I know that some manufacturers say they support DC running. I don't don't mix them. I've never I've never recommended it. I've tried it. They make this horrible buzzing noise on normal DCC. No, I don't like it. Don't recommend it. I have heard of people running this on the analog. You can't run the sound by the way. So 
if you've got analog controllers and you, fur, you turn them full, full power, that's what it recommends, you can only run motor control. Um, just don't, I don't recommend it. That's, that's where I stand on it. Burning, you could burn the decoder out. It depends on what uh, your DC controller, because uh, you've got uh, different Wits, uh, basically, you've got a feedback and you've got normal. There's, there's different uh, styles, DC control. I don't recommend it. Try this with, with normal DCC, basically. That's, that's, that's my recommendation on this. And then obviously you're going to control it for Bluetooth. So... Because obviously with DCC, the power is all the way through the track. All the, the uh, controller does, the base station, is, is send signals down through the track telling the loco what to do. But with this, the power is already there. What happens in this is the, you've got your phone or your iPad in your hand and then you've from the commands are coming from that device, handheld device, directly through the air into the decoder. So it's not going through the track. The power is always through the track. All the decoder, tell it, basically all the signals go through the air, through Bluetooth, into the decoder, this decoder, and then gives commands to tell the uh, loco basically what to do. So, and then basically it tell you the rate of power to take from the track and then move forward, move reverse, sound, put the lights on, whatever. But with this as well, is another fantastic thing. Obviously they're in development, like I said, so there's other sound profiles to be added. I put this in the 9, this is a 21 pin. I'm going to put this in the 9F and I could put the 9x sounds in it. I could then remove this and put it in another loco and put other sound in it. There's a generic, I think there's a generic steam sound on it already, but basically you upload the sound and you can run it in that loco, but if you want to take the decoder out and put it in another loco, it could be a HST. And I could put H uh, Valenta HST sounds on it and obviously there's a lot of other sound profiles that haven't been uh, produced yet but once it's available it'll be on, on the app to download and it's a, a, a reasonable price for a DCC sound set for sound control a reasonable price so 62.99 I purchased mine for from um, Kernel Model Routes and obviously I'm intrigued, it's a new development, a new product, and yes, I want to see what it's done. I've obviously seen other people do videos on it, and yes, I'm going to run it. Obviously not available on Android. I have to wait until that development comes through, because there's lots of different devices that Android use. I'm wrapping it on quite a lot. But yes, thank you for watching and obviously I'm going to upload this tonight. I'm going to be making more videos. I may go quiet. I'm really busy. Work outside, working here, um, developing the new intro and obviously making new videos. So I'm going to make a load of videos in here and then obviously I've got to go through making a new intro, editing them and then putting them out to you guys. I have made videos previously in the past at my previous two addresses. I still need to upload them, so I need to go for editing. I may add used running videos from some of them. There's quite a lot of things that I want to keep, but there's going to be a whole new way of me making videos, which you will see in the future. So please bear with me. I've got a lot of content that I wish to share. 
a lot of things that I want to do, a lot of modeling that I want to, well, I have done, but I need to put it on film so I can share with you guys. That's the whole idea of this, isn't it, peeps? We get ideas from each other. And I watch a lot of guys, a lot of people's videos, and they, they give me ideas and inspiration. And I want to share my inspiration as well. So I'm going to put that out there as well. And then as a community, we come together and we produce fine model route, locos, uh, rolling stock, improving them, uh, layouts, you know, uh, problem solving and all that all comes together and it's great help. So yes, please bear with me and I'll see you guys in the next video. I can't wait to do this, run this product and see what it sounds like for, my, for myself. All right, see you.